very popular type of application problem dealing with rational equations is uh, this type of problem called a motion problem where what you'll have is uh, usually two trips either like a, a going and a coming or an up river and a down river or, or something like that where the rates of speed that you're traveling are different on one trip versus another trip and they'll ask us some, some information either about how far did we travel or how long did it take us to travel or a whole variety of, of you know various things they could ask but it's, it's basically centered around the distance that you've traveled the rate of speed that you traveled and, and how long you traveled um, very basic physics these three quantities are all related by a simple equation it's distance equals rate times time the distance that you traveled is equal to the rate of speed that you're traveling times how long you traveled at that speed and we know this equation intuitively um, just from everyday life if you were in your car and you went 40 miles an hour and you drove that fast for two hours intuitively you know you went 80 miles but, but what you're really doing is you're taking 40 miles per hour which is a rate times two hours and getting 80 but 80 miles is a distance so you can summarize that equation as d equals r times t and this equation here can be manipulated you could say d equals r times t you could say time equals distance over rate or you could say rate equals distance over time just use, using algebra and especially this last one's very intuitive the, the your rate of speed would be like miles which is a distance per hour or feet per second or meters per second or what have you so you can you know you can manipulate that equation around so especially the last two this is why we see these a lot in with rational equations now you can do a similar type problem in the unit on systems of equations but that's not the type we're going to solve here uh, we're, our equations that we'll get will usually be of the last two the form of the last two and then we'll have an equation that, that we have to solve so um, basically you have to take a word problem set it up using this formula here and then solve what you know whatever equation that you get so uh, I'm going to show you how to do that with an example so let's let's take a, a look at an example right now all right so here's a very typical type of example this is a man who's paddling on a river he's going down the river and then he's coming back up the river uh, you'll also see examples with people going on trips to a city and then coming back it could be anything I mean you can code it within any type of situation but the underlying problem is always the same okay so let's let's read this it says it takes a man one hour longer to paddle 20 miles upstream on a river against the current than it does paddling the same river 20 miles downstream with the current that makes sense you can you can go downstream a lot faster because you have kind of your your uh, regular speed plus whatever the current um, the current of the river is helping you and then you have minus that speed of the current of the river uh, against you when you're going upstream so, so that makes sense then they tell us if the river flows at five miles per hour how fast would the man row in still water so if you just put him in a giant swimming pool how how fast would he row then if the river is not helping or hurting him so if, you, if you've watched our previous videos, you know kind of the general setup of, of what we're going to do here. I, I highly recommend making up a, a chart. And one row is going to represent all the information about going downstream. And then uh, the other row will represent all the information about going upstream. So we'll have distance, rate, and time. And notice we actually only need two of these because the third one will be in terms of the other two really so let, let's take a look at, at what we know here all right so let's let's see what we can decipher from this um, so let's see distance well that's easy distance downstream is 20 miles and the distance upstream is the same 20 miles all right the rate now how fast is he going well if you read through the the sentences here they don't tell us they don't we don't know how fast he's going 
But what we do know is that going downriver, he has the river helping him, which, by the way, flows at five miles per hour. And going upstream, that five miles per hour is hurting him. So if you had kind of his, his speed in still water, just that he naturally rose, that, that five miles per hour is being added to his speed going downstream and subtracted from his speed going upstream. So let's say something like this. Let's do his rate of speed plus five miles per hour, an extra five miles per hour going downstream and R minus five going upstream because you would have to subtract that because he's fighting against the river this full in five miles per hour. Now time, I, I see this little thing about one hour longer, but, but ultimately that doesn't seem to help me at least at this moment in time because um, I, I, don't, I don't know one hour longer than what, you know. But as I mentioned earlier, all I need to know is the distance and the rate. I don't, I don't actually have to know the time right now because if distance equals rate times time, then time is equal to distance over rate. So let's just take this 20 and divide it by r plus 5 and the 20 divided by r minus 5. Okay, so there's our table. Now what do we do with it? Well, we have to take this word problem here and somehow make an equation out of all this stuff. Now, now there's one thing I haven't used yet, and that's this one hour longer bit. So it says it takes us one hour longer going upstream than it does going downstream. Okay, so let's, let's think about that. So if we have our upstream amount of time, which is 20 over r minus 5, then that amount of time would equal uh, our amount of time going downstream, which was faster by the way, plus another hour, right? Because it was one hour longer going upstream than it was going downstream. So just to make up some numbers, if it took us four hours to go downstream, and I made that number up, then plus one, that means it would have, that would have been equal to five hours going upstream. Okay, four hours downstream, five hours upstream, or you know something like that. So great, we have a rational equation right here. If we can solve that for r, then what we'll have is um, uh, our r value, uh, that, that'll be our answer, that indicates how fast this guy would row in still water, not with the current helping, but also not with it hurting either. So let, let's remember this and then we'll jot it down on, on the next sheet here. Um, so just so we have some space to work. So 20 over r minus five equals 20 over r plus five plus one. All right, so let's see, 20 over r minus five, that was minus five, right? Yeah, uh, equals 20 over r plus five plus one. Okay, we need our LCD. Least common denominator here would be r minus five times r plus five. Multiply that to both sides, left side and the right side. Multiply LCD on the left, LCD on the left and the right. Um, you should probably write out the LCD here. I'm just a little um, tight for space, just don't have a lot of room to write all that out. Multiply the LCD on the left, the R minus fives would cancel. You'd have 20 R plus five when the R minus fives cancel. Distribute this on the right hand side. We have 20 times R minus five plus R minus five R plus five. Okay, great. Now we have an equation with no fractions. That makes it a lot easier. We have 20r plus 100 equals 20r minus 100 plus r squared minus 25. That's a different, um, uh, um, these are conjugates here, r minus 5 times r plus 5. So r squared plus 5r minus 5r minus 25. All right, um, 
clean this up a little bit, we can subtract 20R from both sides. Let's see, we've got R squared. That's already positive, so let's leave it on the right. We have minus 100, minus 25, which is minus 125, minus another 100, which would be minus 225 equals zero. This will factor as r plus 15 times r minus 15. That's a, a difference of squares there. Um, you could also add 225 to the left and then take the square root if you'd rather. But, but here we see r equals either negative 15 or r <clears throat> equals positive 15. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, if you remember previously, r was his speed in still water, um, where we added five when he was going with the current and subtracted five miles per hour when he was going against the current, because five miles per hour was the speed of the river. Now, one of these answers doesn't make sense. Um, his rate of speed can't be negative 15 miles per hour, so I think it'll be 15. <coughs> um, and, and so, yeah, that's it, that's it. So final answer. His, um, his speed in still water would be 15 miles per hour. So anyways, that's how we set these up. Um, if you had a different type of problem, certain things might be slightly different, but uh, the general setup of the problem is the same. You start with a table, one row is one trip, the other row is the other trip, put in your information for distance, rate, and time, and then make up an equation that you can solve and, and get whatever it is that you're looking for. In this example, we were looking for a rate. You might have another example where they might want the time, you know, the total time on the river. Um, another might ask how far they traveled. So you, you never really know what you're going to be asked for, but as long as you can set your equation up, you should be able to finish it out no matter what they ask you for.